Hey, Luke here with catsandcarve.com, and we are fishing the James River for big blue catfish. Well, hey, everybody. I get a lot of questions from people asking me, how do you catch catfish on big rivers? So I've fished a little bit on a big river or two, but I decided I would enlist the help of catfish guru Chris Erbewine here. This guy's been guiding for 24 years. Yes, indeed. Yes. So we're going to take you around and show you some tips and tricks on how to catch big catfish on a river. They're all across here. You can do the gill net? Yep. yep cool. So the first thing you need to do when you're trying to catch big blue catfish is you need bait. Fresh bait is best. And so what Chris is doing here, is we're putting out a gill net. And we're gonna catch some big old James River shad here, gizzard shad. Yeah, so we've got about a 100 foot gill net out there. Just let it sit for a little while. And uh, if we started to hit a bunch of fish, you'll see those little jugs start to jiggle up and down. Just give it a few seconds and we're either going to have a bunch of them or we won't. Now anybody who fishes a lot for big blue catfish will tell you that fresh bait fish is the key, okay? A lot of guys like to use livers and stink baits and stuff. and That's fine for the little guys, but if you want big catfish, feed them what they're eating. And that's going to be like gizzard shad, skipjack, bluegill, suckers, you know, the big bait fish in your area that they're feeding on primarily. That's what you want to give them. And you can catch them with gill nets, cast nets, fish traps, rod and reel. Check your state regulations, see what's legal in your area. But getting that fresh bait fish is key. There we go. You see one? Yeah, I got one right there below your... Uh, your... Oh, okay. I'm looking down there, I didn't see it. All right, this is the number one blue catfish bait right here. This is a gizzard shad. It's got this long like thin thread right here on the dorsal fin. Kind of a stocky body. And he's got a relatively small mouth. He has kind of blunt, blunt nose and a small mouth. That's how you tell the difference between a gizzard shad and like an American shad or a hickory shad or a thread fin shad, which aren't really shad. Those are all herring. This is a true shad. Gizzard shad won't take a, a hook like a hickory shad or American shad. These things just eat plankton. So you gotta catch them with nets. All right, well, this is our spread here. We've got the Berkeley E-Cat with the Ming Yang Ang 60. We've got the Shatter Cat with the Abu Garcia uh, Catfish Special. We've got Tangling Cat Fish Spin Inversion with the Pen Pursuit 2 8000. We got the Rail Splitter Traveler with the Cast King 90. We've got a Big Cat Fever Heavy Action with the Cast King 90. We've got the St. Croix Mojo Cat with the Ming Yang 60. We've got a Big Cat Fever Medium Heavy with the Ming Yang 60. Then we've got Okuma Battle Cat with the Ming Yang 60. And then we've got a Bass Pro Shop Cat Max with the Abu Garcia Catfish Special. Oh, it dug in? Yeah. Dug in the corner. Mm. Did it? But get out there in the middle. Yeah. It does fine. Fine. Now what causes that? Is that it just didn't really spool it up tight enough? Too much line. Too much line? Too, that's one thing. Yeah. You gotta get it good and tight. But, but if you do too much line too. Too much line, you're digging the corners. Gotcha. See, so it just did it again. Oh. And you, that's what break off Julie's fish. Alright. We're gonna take some off. Alright. One more time across, it'll be good. What kind of knot you do there? Um, I think knot? it's called trialine knot. Trialine? You go through the hole twice. Alright, some big old James River. Gizzard shad, man. All right, some big chunks of fresh shad, man. That's the best catfish bait around. All right, there you go, folks. That is the gizzard shad gizzard. 50 kinds of shad and bait, there's only one gizzard shad. Yeah, hold that one up right there through the belly. Yeah, right there, looks good. Having your bait hooked right is really important because you don't want those little catfish to steal your bait before the big boys get a chance at it. Additionally, you want lots of hook point exposed so that hook's got lots of place to purchase. So hooking it right through the belly meat, just a little bit through the back or in the headpiece, either just a little bit through the back or through the chin, it's really important. Bombs away. 
awesome. Chris, man, I'm liking your beer can rod holder there, man. That's... Oh, that going to the back. I explained it. Then. Beach fish pulled me down. If you look at my rod, see how they all go Yeah, across. bent them. This one's down too low for me. <laughs> but, but I'll bring it back up. You got, got a spacer in there. I got my space. So in rivers, one of the best spots to hit are slopes, especially slopes that have like little caves in it or little input. So you like a cliff with a little nook in it. Um, imagine a big old mean catfish lurking in there, ambushing hapless little shad that walk by. So we are fishing a big old ledge that goes from about five feet all the way down to about 38, 39 feet. And there's one of these little indentations, one of these little caves right in the side of the side of the slope. So we're hitting that spread and that's how we chose it. And we've anchored just upstream and so that the outgoing, oh, we got a bite right there. We got a bite here on the left. When he tells you to hit it, don't take it out of the rod holder. Just reel, 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 reel until that rod bends down really good. Then take it out of the rod holder and fight the fish. Okay. <laughs> so Chris, how long have you been guiding? 24. 24 years? Mm -hmm. All I, did, the I did six years part-time in town that too. Now you're the one who started the 30 pounder or half your money back thing, right? That was yeah. you, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we've been in this spot for about 10 minutes. So we're doing the five minute warning here. We don't stick in the spot for more than about 15 minutes without some action because the fish aren't moving around that much in, in the winter time is it gets cold, right? So if you sit around and wait, they're not here, they're not here. They're not gonna come to you. So you gotta get out and go to them. So we're gonna turn and burn 15 minutes in a spot, don't get any action, then we're gone. All right, so it's been 15 minutes. We've got some nibbles, but no fish, so we're out of here. So let me show you the rig here. We got a 10-aught Mustad uh, thin wire demon hook. Got about 18 inches of 60 pound mono leader. Got a slider, bead and swivel with uh, eight to 12 ounces of lead and 50 pound Berkeley high-vis main line. All right, so we just set up again. We moved down the ridge a little bit, so we're just a little further downstream. Now we're on a feature where there's, instead of a cavern, there's like a big rock. And so we're gonna hit some catfish here. I got a good feeling about this spot, Chris. So Chris, have you ever seen a barge bite where a boat, big boat goes by? Fish start biting? Oh yeah, definitely. I don't know what it is, but every time a big boat goes by, it seems like that always helps things out. Mm -hmm. Bigger than better, yeah. And I gotta tell you how many catfishmen I've talked to, and it seems like everyone says it, man. Big boat goes by when you're fishing, bite picks up. Barge bite, man. It's a real thing. It's been 15 minutes, nothing but little nibbles. Go hit, We're gonna go try another spot. Don't dawdle. That's the key, man. Stick and move. <laughs> All right, here we are, spot number three, man. We are not wasting time in bad spots. This is how you do it. Get around, try stuff out, and if you don't get a bite, keep moving. In the winter time, you, the colder the weather, the more you wanna stick and move. You guys, the four on the left, Curtis, the four on the right, David, and the Mojo Cat in the dead center is me. Hey, hold, hold that for me. He's there. Mm-hmm. This feels good, man. I like this rock. Are you kidding me? The first, the only one Luke has gets the first one. Quality, not quantity, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Not bad. Up right. and over. Yeah, what about you say? Thirty? Twenty-eight? Yeah. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Yes, right over there. Uh, yeah, said yeah. Thirty-one. I said thirty. I, I like being that kind of wrong. It was a nice fish, man. Uh, thirty-two pounds, was it? Yes, sir. Thirty-two pounds. Not a bad way to start. All right, here we go. There she goes. There I go. I got to get my uh, get my gloves out. One little catfish bite ain't no ain't no problem, but. Uh, I got a whole bunch of them after a heavy week of fishing and got my hand infected once. So every once in a while, it's a good idea to have gloves. All right, we pulled out one 32 pounder out of this spot, but then about 15 minutes went by with nothing. So we're out of here. We're gonna try another spot. All right, we just pulled up on our fourth spot and we're in about 35 feet of water and there's an underwater hump that we're gonna fish. And we're just gonna carpet bomb that hump and see what we can pick up. My humps, my humps, my, my lovely humps. lady humps. When you're fishing on big rivers, you need to understand how to anchor your boat. 
okay? Normally you can get away with just one anchor. You go and anchor just upstream of your spot, the current pulls the anchor line tight and keeps you in one spot just upstream of your spot so you can cast onto it. But if you have a situation like we do right now where the wind's kind of picked up a little bit and the wind's blowing a different direction than the current, then we need to throw two anchors to keep us from being flapped around and dragging your gear around. If your gear gets dragged around, not only does it make it hard to detect bites, you get a lot of snags and it'll drag your gear into snags and you'll lose a lot of gear. If the boat's moving back and forth a little bit on you, you've got to let out a little bit of slack because otherwise the boat will drift and it'll drag your gear into snags. But you don't want too much slack because otherwise you can't tell what something's go what's going on at the end of your line. So kind of finding that happy medium of enough slack but not too much slack is uh, one of the, the keys that just comes with experience. Hey uh, Chris, what do you like better, fishing uh, uh, the incoming tide or the outgoing tide? Uh, uh, you know, we'll figure that one out. <laughs> For real. They might bite two days, two weeks, two months on incoming and as soon as you think you got it figured out, they switch to the opposite. It's like sometimes uh, like some spots are good for one type of tide and other spots are good for another type of tide? Oh, for sure, for sure. And it's very, very seldom you can find a spot that's good on both. Go, go, fast, go, 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 stop, go, 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 go. Now you got it. Now you can pick it up. Pick it up out of the rod holder, there you go. Oh. <laughs> Put that one at what, 14? Nice. See what he's doing with this fin? It's called stridulating. Blue catfish are left finned and right finned, so catfish tend to prefer one fin to stridulate with over the other. This is a right finned catfish. Most cat, blue catfish are right finned. Nice fish, man. Nice fish. Congratulations. That's your first blue catfish. Right. Nice. You want to put him back? Yes, yeah, sure. Here. Drop him back in there. We got one fish out of this spot, but it's not exactly red hot, so we're gonna pick up, try another. That is what it's all about, covering ground. Well, it's the day after Thanksgiving, so we've got the obligatory turkey sandwiches, man. Mm. The good stuff. Oh. Okay, this is spot number five, and we're parked near a spot with about 22 feet of water and a lot of sunken trees out here. So, once again, it's all about the structure, right? So trying a little bit different depth and trying a spot that's got a lot of cover, places for a fish to congregate and hide. Hey Chris, about how often do you, you freshen up your bait? I mean, do you fish with the same bait all day? I can use it all day, yep. A lot of twitching going on here. We got bites on the E-Cat, the Shatter Cat, the Big Cat Fever, the Cat Max, the Rail Splitter Traveler. Been here maybe a minute and we've, we've got six of the eight rods bumping. Be a oh, 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 Yeah. There go. you go. <laughs> I just got it. All right, David, not bad. 33 pounds, man. That's a beauty. You like that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's your biggest uh, biggest catfish ever. There you go. Nope. Go, 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 go. Fast, fast. Go, go, go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. That rod will bend over in a minute. Keep going, keep going. I don't know. It's putting more of a bend in the rod than yours did. Yeah, look at how he's swimming over. He's not just giving up like David's. He's fighting, man. You got this. You tired, Curtis? <laughs> I am. <laughs> keep going, keep going, man. Oh, no, yeah, I think hey, that's got you. I think you're in trouble, buddy. Hey, that's a nice one. Get back in now. Oh, don't pop off, Chris. This is oh. That was arm day. <laughs> Oh, that's looking, that's looking that's 40s. <laughs> he actually looks bigger when you take him out of the water. That's, you know, <laughs> that's big, a good that's sign. That's a good sign. Yeah, look how he's got the mud on him. Oh, I thought you were going to touch Yes, he's got the mud in him. When it gets winter, they bury themselves down in the mud. Mm. They kind of chill, come out and feed every once in a while. I'm saying 38. 38. 40, 42. 
Yeah, that's what I said, boy. I'm 43. 43. 43. Nice. Yeah. There you go, Curtis. Nice. 43 pounds. That's a, right. A full 10 pounds heavier than David's best fish ever. You know why? Because <laughs> all I do is win, win, oh. win, no matter what. <laughs> That's it. That's your biggest catfish ever, right? Biggest ever. First ever. First ever. All right. Way to start. Spoiling you rotten. Let's get him All back right. in there. Woo! Ah. High fives, Ed. Woo! I'm glad you got a chance to feel awesome for a little bit, David. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been a nice spot. We caught two really nice fish, but uh, it's been a little while since we got a bite, so we're going to move the boat. We're going to move down just a little ways and hit basically the upstream side of this same hole and see what happens. Look at that. I caught a clam. There you go. All right, guys, here we are in spot number six. We just moved down from spot number five. We're going to cast the spread out, hitting those sunken logs, and we'll see what happens. I got some good vibes about this. There, there you go. There pick him is. up. Pick him up. Get him. Get him. Pull him out. Okay. There you go. Just like that. Okay. Now, <laughs> no, under, under Chris, Come then on. over this one. There you go. Fish him all the way across. We'll go that way, baby. Come on, David. Come on, David. Come on. I'm running and popping my whole leg. You're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just saw a bunch of bubbles come up. Big, I saw a great big bubble. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Yeah, there's a big one down there. What is that way? Like? Oh! <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Pull them nope. up. Pull them up. That way. <laughs> <laughs> That sure looks like a 58 to me. All right, David, you just broke your PB for the third time today. How does that feel? Pretty good. 58 pounds, man. That's a monster. Look at that. He's inhaling your hand. Yes, he is. Congratulations. Thank you. It's very heavy. Okay, you want to put it back? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Slimy. For real. Oh, is this the fishing pole you wanted to try out? Oh, no. It is? Nope. Oh. He just wants to pull one in. Yeah, like where's the cam? Yeah. yeah, look at that. Every once in a while, you're fishing for catfish, and you get a nice little bonus. Well, that's about 14, eh? Not a bad striper at all. <laughs> there we go. Nice little rockfish. This has been a great spot, but it's cooled down. It's time to move on. Do not let success glue you into one spot. You having a good time? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's awesome, man. But you, Curtis, you having a good time? Heck yeah! All right, guys, we're at spot number seven, last spot of the day, and we are excited to catch some big trophy fish. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Now, guys, I got to tell you, I've been fishing with a lot of guides over a lot of years, and I'll tell you, the way you tell a good fishing guide is how many spots they got. You know, a guy who can just keep going, new spot, new spot, new spot, new spot, that's a good guide right there. Chris is the best, man. So I'm going to put a link in the description to uh, how to contact him and put his phone number in here. So if you guys want to come down and catch big blue catfish on the James River, just give Chris a call. If he doesn't get 30 pounder, give you half your money back. All right, well, let's get some fresh bait on these hooks and we're gonna see if we can't pull out a couple more trophies before it's time to call it a day. Hey, 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 real, hey, real, real, real fast. Hey, well, that's, oh, he's a small one. Yeah. Oh, Man. He just got, we got a lot of current going through here. And, uh, The only reason why that fish looks small is because of your grossly disproportionate right. experience. <laughs> That's still a really nice catfish. Yeah, that's a pretty one, man. Yeah. Look at that. I'll give him 17. Yeah. Not bad for your second blue catfish ever. He put up a good fight. He used that yeah. current, man. He got into that current and just Goodness. went. Whoop. 
Uh, all right, <laughs> whiskers. Beautiful. Woo wee! Woo hoo! Nice little little dinky guy. Got a leech on him. Want to see that? Ooh, got a leech. leech. There you go, little buddy. All right, let's put him back. So right here we got a spot with quite a bit of current, and you can see there's a big boil out in the water where the current is hitting a kind of a little hump or something, and it's popping the the current's popping up, and then it drops down to like 30 feet behind it. So that's a great little break in the current. In any place that you get current breaks, the fish like to hang out there, and as food comes by, washed by the current, they can come up and snatch it. So that's uh, those that's little boils. It's an eight foot hump right there. Oh, there we go. Let me see what you got. Nice. Look at now, that. You see, this is why you need a rod with a lot of power because this current made that rod just bend, even with this relatively smaller catfish. You need a lot of backbone when these big river rods if you're going to be fishing in heavy current. I mentioned right. we'll put them back. Let's put them back. There you go. You can see how much current we got coming around the side of the boat. That current just doubles and triples the feel of the fish. So having a big stiff rod really helps. Well guys, it's been awesome. It's been super fun. But the sun is setting and it's time to go home. I think we've already gotten one phone call from our wives asking where we're at. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, learned something new about catching big catfish on a river. If you'd like to see more great fishing videos, don't forget to click subscribe to the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel. We put out multiple videos every week and click that bell button to get notified each time we post a new video.